Hey everyone, it's the Insane Botanist here. Now, I know I've not posted in a while, and unfortunately I'm deciding to make this video on a windy day, but uh, it's finally gotten warm enough for me to feel comfortable dragging things around rather than being freezing cold, even though I have the greenhouse, which you saw in the kind of intro uh, panoramic thingy. But anyways, once I get into the greenhouse, it'll actually be a lot less windy. I mean, you'll still hear the wind, but um, this greenhouse I actually constructed uh, beginning of last year with my dad and my family, plus my... Uh, my family has a landscaper and he managed to level out the floor. The fun thing about the floor is that it took us practically building the entire greenhouse to realize that the floor was actually not level because we got it level, but if anyone is aware with QP, aka quarry process, it's the kind of stuff you see on the ground right here. Excuse the weeds, we're gonna weed kill but the quarry process is such a rough gravel that it kind of takes some time to settle. And it was a week or two to a month we realized that it seemed pretty level, so we started building. A week by go goes by, we've pretty much got the entire structure. And this is the grandiose summit, 12 foot by 16 foot. And... The way you do it is you start out with the back and the front constructed and then you see the and then you see these kind of cross beams there's also some of these struts like that one that's right there that I'm pretty much pointing to pretty much on each corner there's one of those brackets that was pretty those were pretty much used to mount the sides the front and back side to the frame and pretty much you just put these cross pieces make sure it's all level and then you pretty much put more of these cross pieces like the straight up pieces that you see then you kind of move up from the base to the top with assorted other struts and stuff if any of you are watching this and are aware of Grandio or you've looked at Grandio, you know kind of what I'm getting at. There's there's assorted braces and stuff. Like this is part of the um, snow slash wind resistance. You know, in the in the winter, if there's a lot of snow, it'll kind of brace the entire structure since it's it's not the standard house shape where it's just like two slanted roofs it's barn style where it's two segments of roof as you can kind of see like you start out this is the bottom of the roof and that's the very roof and that's the very tip of the entire structure well comically for the entire year that we had it constructed, we truly didn't use it, but we were interested in the temperature outside versus the temperature inside of the greenhouse. And I think, if I recall correctly, like the middle of winter when it was maybe way below freezing and you know, like you'd throw water and it wouldn't be so crazy that it would instantly freeze, but you knew pretty much by the time it was on the ground it was pretty much frozen in the next 10 minutes. Um, but yet the greenhouse would actually be around 50 to 70 degrees. And that's without any supplemental heating, which in the future I may add because I know I want to grow some tropical plants. Um, but we use this temp stick, which you can get on Amazon and it seems like a pretty simple and easy process and I actually had all these 
sort of um, raised garden beds, which I previously used in my attempts to save my greenhouse project while I was undergrad. And unfortunately, some of the plants didn't survive because at that point I wasn't actually home. So I was leaving my mom and dad to deal with watering them and they didn't realize and I forgot to mention that when you are trans transitioning a hydroponic plant to a I, I'll call it geoponic but it's just soil any soil you want to kind of transition it from heavy water just gradual reduction in water so let's say for the first week you have heavy water to the point that you feel like you're drowning the plant the next week you kind of reduce it to the point where it seems a lot of water for what it is after maybe a month or two it'll get down to the standard level of watering needs and yeah they, they unfortunately died but the plants that I actually had in soil during my greenhouse project is well they worked they were alive and well for the time that I had them and for any of you in the north um, the northern sections of the US you kind of know that um, you kind of know that with the climate we're in peppers are an annual not a perennial a greenhouse will actually extend that, but I didn't have a greenhouse at the time, so I couldn't really extend the growth season. But anyways, in these planters, I'm planning to actually plant a bunch of peppers. Um, I got from various plant sales and garden centers uh, a habanero, some ornamental peppers, which I'll actually have in the house because ornamental peppers are more of a house plant rather than a agricultural crop but they're still technically crop plants but I'll explain that in a future video about my certificate of medicinal and economic botany but I have ghost pepper, habanero, a large bell pepper, a purple bell pepper, a and by the way, when I say large, it's going to be red because that's what a bell pepper is. When you buy a bell pepper from the supermarket, a green one is underripe. A yellow or orange one is between the underripe and near ripe stage. And red is, of course, the ripest of them. Unless you have a chocolate bell pepper or a purple bell pepper, then those will ideally ripen to that color but I know from last year when I grew purple bell peppers actually when you keep them going they will turn red so I'd almost consider the colored bell peppers a cultivar aka cultivate cultivated variety of peppers which you're kind of picking it at the orange stage rather than the red stage I've also got assorted kind of snacking peppers, both spicy and sweet, so I'll see how those work. My next video will probably be me planting these peppers and talking a little more in depth about the peppers. This was more about the greenhouse and the fact that if you live in an area where it gets pretty cold, especially in the winter, or you suffer with wind, a greenhouse is a really good way to kind of shelter your plants while also allowing them to grow even in less ideal circumstances. Anyways, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.